Hello friends and uh, welcome back to another video from the Inquisitive channel. I hope you're all well and keeping safe wherever you are in this crazy world. Right, today we'll be uh, talking about, well in this video we'll be talking about eukaryotes and prokaryotes, okay, and we'll be looking at the differences between the two. Before I get into that, let me uh, let me request your help um, with this channel. Uh, this channel, for those viewers who have been here before, know that uh, this is only a week old from the recording of this video. Uh, so it's, it, it is in its sort of infancy stage. Uh, so if you could drop uh, a like, if you do like the video, uh, drop, write some comments, please. Okay, I, I rely on feedback. If you, uh, if you have some questions on the topic or any questions really, do let me know. Okay, so subscribe, please hit the bell icon and and do drop a like, okay? Like I said, if you like the video. Right then, without further ado, let's get down to it then. Okay, so what we have here is what we call a phylogenetic tree. Now, this phylogenetic tree, any phylogenetic tree, really shows the uh, evolutionary relationship of, uh, in this case, of cells during the course of life on Earth. We can see the evolution, uh, evolutionary pattern of cells. So which cells came before, which cells came afterwards, for example. And we can do this by looking at uh, commonalities in, in genes, as well as structure function relationships. And we can map all, all the cells according to, the, uh, according to this phylogenetic tree. And what you can clearly see from this, uh, from uh, by, through this mapping technique, is that cells fall under three main domains of life. Okay, so cells can be bacteria, they can belong to the archaea family, or they can be they can belong to the eukaryota family. Okay, so all the cells that I've been talking about so far have uh, have belonged to the eukaryota family. So I've talked about animal cells, I've talked about plant cells, and they're all eukaryotes. Okay. What you can also observe is that all three domains of life, okay, have, you can map them down to one ancestor. Okay. Now, this ancestor is sometimes referred to as the last universal cellular ancestor or sometimes shortened to LUCA. Okay. So all cells are derived ancestrally to this to this first known cell. So, I mean, there is no uh, fossil proof for LUCA, okay? Uh, but using uh, <clears throat> commonalities in genes, we can see that at this point, okay, some uh, somewhere between 3.5 billion and 4 billion years ago, LUCA gave rise to other cell types. Okay, so that was a bit of a historical perspective um, on this topic of prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Okay, so I think it's self-explanatory as to which cells or which domain of life uh, are prokaryotes and which domain of life are eukaryotes. Uh, all the cells that I've been talking about in my previous videos so far uh, have dealt with animal cells and uh, plant cells. Okay, animal cells, plant cells fall under the eukaryota domain. Okay, uh, bacteria and archaea are prokaryotes. Now. A long time ago, uh, RK, uh, people thought that RK were also bacteria. Okay, so they used to call these the RK bacteria. So this was actually one domain, kind of. Uh, but it changed that uh, because there was a distinct difference between bacteria and RK. Bacteria have a, uh, as you'll learn in a minute, um, have a cell wall made up of peptidoglycan. Okay, so a special uh, polysaccharide. Whereas RK don't have this, okay? So that's how you, that's how we separated bacteria from RK. Okay, so let's look at uh, the distinct characteristics of uh, eukaryotic cells. Okay, now all animal cells, all plant cell, fungi, protista are eukaryotic cells. Okay, eukaryotic cells range from 10 micrometers to 100 micrometers. Okay, so. I, if you're unsure about what micrometers is, please refer to my earlier video where I explained this. Okay, 
Uh, eukaryotic cells also have this characteristic where they have a distinct nucleus. Okay, it's a membrane-bound nucleus, so it's a, it's a distinctive uh, structure by itself. And uh, when you do look at cells under the microscope and you stain them, uh, you'll see you'll see this that uh, the, the nucleus stands out. It's it's the biggest organelle usually in the cell. Okay. Um, and in the nucleus, okay, we have chromosomes, okay, and those chromosomes are linear, okay. So you can take one end, okay, unravel the chromosome, and it'll be it'll be a straight line. So okay, so it's linear, and uh, these uh, these chromosomes are wrapped around histone proteins, okay. So specialized proteins, especially made for uh, allowing the DNA to be wrapped around. Now. Eukaryotic cells exist mostly as multicellular organisms, okay, but uh, they can also exist as unicellular, okay. Uh, so you can also see from this picture here that uh, you have distinct. So uh, as well as the nucleus, everything, every other organelle is distinctive, okay, because they're all membrane bound, okay. So all organelles are membrane bound. Okay. And another distinctive difference is how the cells divide. Okay. Cell division in eukaryotic cells is achieved by a process called mitosis. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll cover mitosis in, in, in a later video. Okay. Uh, and so, so that's uh, eukaryotic cells. Now, if we look at prokaryotic cells, and we'll compare them in a minute, okay. prokaryotic cells uh, are, are, are a lot smaller. Uh, it says two order by the order of two. So if, if it's by an order of one, then it's ten times. If it's if it's by an order of two, it's a hundred times. Okay, so it's it's ten times to the it's to the power. Okay, um, so they're a lot smaller, and they can be down to one micrometer. So if you remember in in a previous um, video, I talked about plant cells being up to a hundred micrometers. Okay. So one times ten is ten, and then ten times by ten is a hundred. So that's why we have this two-order uh, magnitude smaller in terms of prokaryotic compared to uh, eukaryotic cells. Okay, all bacteria and archaea are prokaryotes. So we we discussed this in the in the in the first slide. Okay, now unlike um, unlike eukaryotes, the chromosome is not in linear form it's actually in a it's in it's in a it's a circular form okay it's in a circular form so one end is attached to the other end so it's in it's in a circular form okay and you can see that it's it doesn't have a distinct um a nucleus in which the chromosomes exist in there is, there is what we call a nucleoid region Okay, but it's not a distinctive a nucleus. So if you stain bacteria, for example, you won't see a nucleus. Okay. Uh, so other than DNA residing on the chromosome, we also have uh, extra chromosomal DNA. Okay. Which means that it's DNA independent of the actual main chromosome, and that's and they they're called plasmids. Okay. So extra DNA present known as plasmids. Uh, these are important. You'll you'll later find out um, when it comes to antibiotic resistance. Okay, so so when somebody has a bacterial infection and the body can't uh, deal with it by itself, uh, they might be administered with antibiotics. Uh, you may have heard of this this phenomenon called antibiotic resistance, or where bacteria where uh, yeah, bacteria become resistant to antibiotics. Uh, the antibiotic resistance genes are normally expressed. In plasmids, okay. Another another uh, important factor with with uh, bacteria is that this bacteria. This let's just if you picture this. If this is a, if this is one bacteria and this is not resistant, okay. And there was another bacteria next to it which was resistant. That bacteria could pass on the plasmid to this bacteria and then this bacteria would become antibiotic resistance okay so plasmids can be uh, shuttled from one bacteria to the next okay so uh, what, what you'll also find is that there's no distinctive uh, structure 
you find in the bacteria. So there is no membrane bound organelle. Okay, so there's no mitochondria such. There's no endoplasmic reticulum. There are ribosomes and stuff like that, but uh, uh, not nothing organelle bound. Okay, and on the outside, so what you'll find is that bacteria also have a plasma membrane, just like eukaryotic cells. Okay, so they have a plasma membrane, but they have a cell wall as well. Okay, and this cell wall is made made up with this uh, through this chemical here called peptidoglycan. Okay, and it uh, and outside that, okay, the some bacteria have a slime capsule as well. Some bacteria, that's why there's an asterisk here. Okay, not all bacteria have a slime capsule. Okay, so now let's uh, combine that information into into one bite size slide. Okay, so. Let's look at the differences between eukaryotes and prokaryotes. We know what each one, uh, each type of cell has. Let's look at the um, differences. Okay, so we know that eukaryotes, there's a membrane-bound nucleus. We know the DNA is linear and it uh, exists in a in a distinctive uh, membrane-bound nucleus. Okay, um, organelles are membrane-bound and they're quite big. Okay, 10 to 100 micrometers in size. Okay. Um, and cell division is through a process called mitosis. Okay. Now, prokaryotes, <clears throat> there's no nucleus, there's no distinctive nucleus. Okay. There is a chromosome, but it's 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 usually just one chromosome. Whereas in human beings if, uh, or any any animal really, there's there's multiple chromosomes. Okay. In the in the prokaryotic cell, uh, it's it's a single circular chromosome. Okay. Uh, there's no there's no membrane bound organelles, and they're an order of two smaller uh, than eukaryotic cells. Okay. So we're comparing, say, a hundred micrometers. Okay. To 0.2 micrometers. So very very small indeed. Okay. And it's and it's also very very difficult to see bacterial cells in, under the microscope. Okay. You need a, a quite a large mag, uh, quite a high magnification to be able to see microbes bacteria okay um, okay and cell division unlike mitosis okay cell division is by a process called binary fission okay again we'll talk about this in, in, in a future video okay and there's also eukaryotic cells have a has a pla have a plasma membrane and outside <coughs> sorry outside that there's nothing else but with the prokaryote there's also in some cases a slime capsule <coughs> Okay, so what do they have in common then? Well, quite a bit actually. So they they both have DNA. Okay, they both have a cell membrane, a cell plasma membrane. Uh, they both have cell walls. Now you've got to be careful here. Okay, the cell walls. So and it, so uh, plant cells have a cell wall, which are eukaryotic cells. Uh, bacteria have a cell wall, but sorry, let's just go back for a second. Um, Plant cells have their, their their cell wall is made up of something a bit different. It's made up of uh, cellulose, uh, hemicellulose, and pectin. Okay. Uh, whereas with prokaryotes, okay, the uh, the cell wall is is quite a bit different. It's made up of different chemicals altogether. Okay, and uh, it's classed as peptidoglycan. Uh, what they also have, so <clears throat> so they both have cell walls, but be careful that the cell walls are composed of different materials. Okay. Uh, can also have flagella. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, this sort of filament that extends out, which helps them to propel through uh, the media so that they can move. So eukaryotic cells can move, and prokaryotic cells can move as well, in general. Okay, so those are the those are the uh, the common features, and these are the distinctive features. Okay, so there you go. Then so that's uh, that's it. Uh, I'm, the the actual aim of most videos of most of my videos will be to keep it as short as possible okay so i'm quite happy that uh, we've kept it under 15 minutes it's good stuff okay so that's it for this video uh like usual just to end on uh, just end on this uh just to remind you to please um drop a like if you if you thought this video was was useful um 
a bell, uh, tap the bell as well so that uh, you get notifications on with upcoming videos. I'm trying to make a video every sort of two to three days now. So um, if you're interested, uh, please click on this uh, bell icon so you get notified. I mean, just for your information, what, I, what I'm trying to do is actually uh, go through all the syllabus. So all the syllabus for secondary school education, biology at least, will be in this channel. Okay, so which makes access to uh, necessary information a lot easier. Okay, thank you very much. All the best. Stay safe.